Crown Collars is designed as an adult drinking game that may be viewed without consumption of alcohol. Consumption of alcoholic beverages impairs your ability to operate machinery and may cause health problems. We do not recommend misuse of alcohol, including excessive consumption, binge drinking, drinking and driving, and or underage drinking. It is the viewer's responsibility to monitor and moderate their alcohol consumption. Shot Collars cannot assume any responsibility for the effect that our content may have on people. If this stream lasts for longer than four hours, contact your doctor immediately. Batteries not included. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Shot Callers. We're here to bring you yet another action-packed evening of MLTP action. Uh, this evening, we'll be watching Boost and Dynamo take on Red Hot Chili Poppers in what promises to be quite the thriller. I'm Ron Sponson, and I'm joined by Liquid and Pithy, and together we're bringing you the second week of Shot Callers, Tag Pro's favorite drinking game. Now, if you guys weren't here last week, the rules are extremely simple. The main one, the one you're gonna be using the most often, is every single cap. We're going to be drinking, and we'd love it if you guys joined in too at home. The more, the merrier. Now, the second rule, every successful nub step warrants two sips, two drinks. And uh, let's hope we get to see a few of those again this week. But most importantly, every showboat, that's one shot of your hard liquor of choice. So keep that alcohol bottle at the ready. Yeah, I don't think we saw any showboats last week, but uh, we're always looking for them. So we may see a couple <laughs> this week. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Let's take a peek at uh, some of the numbers for this matchup tonight. Uh, we've got a pretty uh, balanced matchup. Both teams coming in tied for first place in the league uh, with an undefeated record. Uh, but if you look at the seasons of MLTP experience, that's where the balance starts to skew in one direction. We're seeing Boost and Dynamo come in with 18 seasons of uh, previous MLTP experience and uh, Chili Poppers coming in with just five. But uh, more importantly, the place where it's most skewed is in the final stat. Uh, Boost and Dynamo is the only team coming in uh, this to this match with a logo that looks somewhat acceptable on stream. <laughs> Hard to argue that one. Now, to go back to your experience comment, if you look at the lineups coming into this game, one team is lining up with two rookies. You could almost argue two and a half rookies. Uh, and on the other side, you got Boost and Dynamo with some veterans coming in. So on Boosin's side, you got JJ Poole and Viles. JJ Poole who has a bunch of seasons on defense, has switched recently this season to offense, and last week showed that he is no slouch. And partnering up front is Viles, who's used to be known for his support play, but week one, he led his team in caps, so it seems like he can go both ways. And speaking of going both ways, we've got Intercest here, known as one of the best, if not the best, offensive player in recent MLPP history. Uh, switched to defense this season and last week put up 80 tags, so again, no slouch. And he's partnered by Stan. Stan the man went to the Super Bowl last season on Intercess Team Boosten and is putting up some great stats again this season. Just You can never go wrong with Stan on your team. Now on the other hand, you've got Tantru putting up quite the impressive lineup of potential and skill. You've got NEU Husky coming into majors for the first time in his career and showing that he deserves to be there. He's partnered by PyCat, formerly known as Megatron, who has one prior season in MLPP, uh, helping Holy Rollers, the underrated Holy Rollers, make the playoffs back in Season 11. And, and yeah, if you are playing the MLTP subreddit drinking game, that's a drink. <laughs> so those two were extremely dangerous last week. Megatron actually leads the league in Week 1 in caps with 10 caps. And on defense, you've got Toasty, another player who, like Intercest, was one of the best, if not the best, offensive player uh, purely offensive player in MLTP recent memory and this season switches to defense puts up amazing numbers as well and he's partnering Misaki who's another rookie so if you look at this Red Hot Chili Poppers team you really got the narrative of rookies versus experienced players uh, it should be an exciting matchup but I think the most exciting part of this matchup is by far the fact that Intercest and Tantru the two captains last met each other in the Super Bowl last season the biggest game of the season and not only was it just a Super Bowl it might have been one of the most entertaining Super Bowls in recent memory took it to three games extremely close you saw comebacks you saw near comebacks and in the end Tantru took it this season comes back with a completely refreshed lineup four fresh faces whereas Intercess decided to stick with familiar faces and they're gonna see they're gonna duel again and see who can take it this time around yeah, it'll be interesting to see which of those two strategies uh, is going to be victorious tonight uh, each week, we also like to take a peek at the uh, news that we see in the Tag Pro and MLTP subreddits. Uh, starting things off, we have 
Developmental Lad and TC Jukes, uh, their game that was supposed to happen uh, today actually ended up happening last Thursday. And interestingly enough, we saw yet another split from Deve Developmental Lad. Yeah, congratulations to Dodds Falls and company for actually proving all the haters wrong and getting their second win on the board this season. Now, speaking of Dodds Fall, he and Dope released the first edition of the MLTP Top 10 video just today. If you haven't gotten the chance to check it out, fret not. We've got you taken care of. Uh, Pithy has been uh, thinking ahead, added the video to the first half halftime break. And so just stay on the line and you're going to be able to check out the dankest plays from week one right here on Chalk Collars. And there were two potential power-up updates that were proposed from the dev team in the MLTP subreddit as well. Uh, the first one was symmetrical base power-ups. Uh, that one got a bit of a mixed reaction. Yeah, the second one uh, seemed to be a bit warmer in terms of its reception. Uh, it was custom map maker power up so each map maker could choose which power-up spawns where. And if we look at uh, the final one, speaking of power-ups, uh, there is a really interesting suggestion here on the Tag Pro subreddit uh, that uh, it regarded tweaks to the game to increase engagement and give players a sense of pride and accomplishment when they play Tag Pro. Now, uh, that was actually the most well-received suggestion uh, in order to accomplish <laughs> that was to lock power-ups until a reasonable amount of playtime or donations were received. Now, uh, Private Major was engaged for comment, but he has determined it was not upvoted nearly enough. And I don't get it. I find it's a beautiful, fantastic suggestion. I don't see why Koala Beast would not implement it right away. Now, this week's maps, moving on, we've got Jardim again once again if you guys tuned in last week you saw 29 caps in the boosting game let's hope it provides the same amount of entertainment we all know jardim is an action-packed map back and forth all over the place caps left right and center and it's a very boosty map so you're going to see a lot of snipes and that's something you're going to see on the second map of the week as well with rush coming in a bowtie classic another map that's very snipe heavy it rewards skill but it also rewards fast quick offensive players and i feel like if you were to ask me, I'd say Tantra's team, Red Hot, Chili Poppers, have the edge in terms of pace on offense, but probably in terms of uh, defensive snipes, you could give that edge to the Boost and Dynamo. So it should be a pretty exciting matchup either way. I mean, these are eight extremely talented players. There's not a coincidence that both the teams are tied for first place in the league, and these maps should bring out the best of them. And if you're looking for more fast-paced maps with lots of boosts, we have the Jump Cup Halftime Challenge coming up yet again this week. It's our Tag Pro version of Beer Pong that you, the viewer, can play live. If you'd like to participate, we're opening up the signups now. So uh, the two ways to sign up, well, actually you have to do both of these. Uh, follow this channel and then type exclamation point jump in chat to enter our drawing and we'll pick uh, four lucky viewers to participate in the game tonight. Oh man, I can't wait. Last week's Jump Cup was awesome. And now that people kind of know what it looks like, I can't wait to see the new strategies that are going to be employed on the map. Now, before we get started with the MLTP action, uh, I'm curious, Ron, what are you drinking tonight? Well, the, this evening I'm going to be drinking uh, Lagunitas IPA. Uh, it's a pretty standard fare IPA. Comes in at an uh, ABV of 6.2%, so a little bit higher than normal. Uh, but it's not obnoxious uh, at its level either. Uh, you're a tough guy. You can handle that. The, uh, I'm not quite as tough. I'm down to 5.5%. So my beer clock's in a bit lower than yours in terms of ABV. It's uh, the Unibrew Raftman. I took a page out of your book and decided to be a bit of a beer snob today. Uh, Unibrew, which is actually a brewery just outside of Montreal, so repping the local stuff. And it says it's a Belgian-style smoked ale. So another Belgian-style beer. I guess I, I do have a trend going here. And the smoked ale, do you know what that means, Ron? I, I actually don't know what smoked ale means. Uh, my understanding, now, I, I'm not an uh, expert, uh, as it were, of smoked ales, but my understanding <laughs> would be it would infuse a bit of a peatiness to it, to very similar to what you would get out of a uh, maybe an Islay Scotch whiskey. Hmm, well, you, you and I both know that Islay Scotch is absolutely delicious, so let's hope that translates into beer. Uh, I know I have a lot of friends who have been brewing beer in the processes, so different from uh, distilling scotch so we'll see if that there's any similarity in these styles yeah i'll be interested to hear if you actually taste the smokiness like i i don't know that a uh, smoked like i have smoked meat right and that is a good addition to it I, i'm hmm. the jury's still out whether or not uh, smoked beer is the right <laughs> way to go should, should i be smoking this beer is that is that how it works i light it on one <laughs> end and that's that's next season's stream <laughs> 
<laughs> what would we call that one? Think of a name for us, guys. We might actually do it. <laughs> so it looks like we're just waiting on the teams here. Uh, Boosten seems to be set and ready, and Red Hot is on their way. Um, lineups seem to be as expected in terms of the Boosten lineup. We got Viles and JJ Pool up front, Intercess and Stan. And those are four guys that we actually got to see front and center last week. Now, did anyone stand out to you, Ron, when we watched them play? Uh, let's see. I think, uh, was it JJ Poole who had that uh, boost block? It, no, uh, it was Intercessed. Intercessed. Intercess. Intercess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> evidently, it was very memorable, right? But <laughs> <laughs> I can I can at least see the play. It was in the top 10. Uh, boost blocking two of the defenders out of the way uh, to be able to come in, or the offensive D, actually, and get the cap. And that was the standout play and standout player to me. Yeah, Intercess, I think he has two t plays in the top 10, two plays in t the top four, actually. Actually, I think he might even have the two top plays of the week. <laughs> so the guy is, uh, he's on fire to start off the season. He's picking up right where he left off. I believe he had the 10 gas last season, and it looks like he's primed to dominate once again this season on defense, pulling a bit of a leg man, so to speak, uh, who last season that we streamed back uh, in season nine with MLTP Live, leg man had transitioned to defense, and I believe he won the most valuable ball on defense that season. So... Uh, Intercess trying to prove that now that he's in the Hall of Fame, he can hang with the best in terms of emulating their achievements. Now, one thing he'll have to do, though, to successfully do that is win a Super Bowl on defense after to join his Super Bowl on offense, which Legman did back in Season 9. And with the team he's got here, you never know. They're off to a pretty good start. Hard to argue uh, with a 2-0 and start. Now, do we have a name change here? I see that they're uh, coming in as Guts instead of Neo Husky. Is that the same player? So NEU Husky actually only played 20 minutes in week one, and it might be the case that that's happening once again this week. I'm not sure if it's in terms of availability or in terms of talent. I mean, NEU Husky put up six caps in 20 minutes, so I'm sure it's not a question of skill. Uh, I'm guessing Guts is going to be taken over uh, for offense alongside PyCat for half number one, or at least game number one, and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, I'm excited to see what he brings to the table, though. Yeah, unless they're doing a, a quick one on us and they're going to do a last-minute substitution, uh, not not forecasting to the other team uh, what their actual starting lineup is going to be. I haven't <laughs> that, seen the meta go quite there yet. But that, that would be Tantru would be the first one to bring mind games into the group stage of the game. Uh, the guy is a genius at mind games. He gets into other captains' heads. I think he almost single-handedly made Ball God quit MLTP this season. And. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for better or for worse, he managed to take away or take down a pretty threatening opponent. So, who knows? Maybe he is doing these crazy mind games in uh, in the group uh, of the game. You never know. Now, it'll be interesting. Uh, Jardim last week, we saw s some pretty exciting play, actually, because of how fast paced it was. Um, there were a lot of caps happening, a lot of quick succession. Um, one of the interesting things on the map that I saw was the bombs. Uh, it, I, th I think you had made a comment last week. Uh, we haven't really seen this map in play before, and so uh, a lot of people are still trying to experiment with the bombs, and we're seeing some uh, interesting plays develop because of it. Yeah, what's interesting about these bombs is you can not only trigger them by hitting them, but there's also a button on the other end, so it lends itself well to people coming from both sides of the map, and that's where you get a lot of unpredictable plays, because oftentimes players on one end don't account for the fact that the bomb can be triggered from the other end, especially when it's the trigger end. And you also have teammates trying to help out, but there's so many spikes in different areas that the players can end up that taking into account the movements of all the players around the bomb rather than just the player that they have in mind, it can sometimes shake things up a bit. And because it's so central, you often have four or five players just sitting around the bomb within its radius, and that can lead some pretty chaotic plays. And I mean, I know in MLTP captains don't like chaos, but when it comes to viewers and shot callers, chaos is the name of the game, and we love Jardim. Yeah, and I think it'll be interesting, too, having that be our first game of the season. Uh, we may, or sorry, first game of the evening, <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of caps, a lot of drinks coming up uh, very quickly in the first uh, first game here. Yeah, as we said last week, featuring uh, the London Waz and Boostin, we had 29 caps over two halves. 17 of those caps came in a single half. So, you know, if we're not um, hammered at the end of that, then we're doing something wrong. <laughs> Now, guys, we'd love to hear, what are you guys drinking back home? We told you what we're drinking. We'd love to hear what you guys are up to. Is it beer? Is it cider? Is it non-alcoholic beer? We're not judging. Is it hard stuff? We'd love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know in chat uh, what your drink of choice for the evening will be.
I think we're still, I don't know what the status is. We just got a few moments left. I see all the players are in place. So I'm not sure if there's some final strategy both being teams discussed. Are ready. It seems like both teams okay. are ready. So perfect. It should be a matter of moments before we're right in the action. Well, I'm sure it's heck ready. <laughs> yeah, keeping this stream safe for work, eh? Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, we wouldn't want anyone swearing on stream now, would we? No, uh, that Fuck that no. would be a drink, potentially. Should, should that be a rule? I, I, Every, I we think We have the so. swear jar? Yes. <laughs> All right. I guess I have to take a fucking drink. Two drinks. Oh, boy. I feel like you should also drink every time you try to water down your, your swear. Every time you say heck, that's a drink for you, bud. The opposite rule. <laughs> the swear list jar. Three, two, one. So we're off. Looks like both teams are going to be heading on offense, but Boosin kind of gets stuck midway through. One of those curious bomb plays we were talking about. Now Pycat, Megatron out past two. He's going to try to get the Jukin, but Intercess says no. Yeah, and I'm having a little bit of trouble joining the game, so just keep going. Yeah, Stan's playing a good anti, and it helped them get a reset, but Boosin's offense is not helping them out too much. They haven't been able to get the flag out a single time so far. Now, given we're only 30 seconds into the game, so I'm willing to give them a little time to figure things out. Inter is currently switching on offense, and we all know if one player is going to be switching offense, he's not a bad choice. It looks like he might be past two. I would have said past three, but Tosi has the edge, gets the re-grab, and he's another flag carrier that you love to have. It looks like he might be past three, past four. Oh my god, does he get the nub step? He doesn't. JJ Poole buying that juke a bit, but Stan coming in to save the day. Now, action has slowed down a little bit. We got two resets and power-ups are coming up. JJ Poole is going to swoop in to grab the one on the right. It's a juke juice. Meanwhile, PyCat gets the juke juice on his side, and power-ups are tied for the first round. All right, here we are. I finally got in. Stan going to have a little bit of trouble getting out. Uh, JJ Poole with the Juke Juice, but he's getting double teamed on it. Uh, nice job of both Toasty and Misaki getting together and going two on one against that Juke Juice. Poole Vials with a crafty boost. Misaki reads it, and just, that's such a smart play right there. He reads that Toasty is going to try to, or not Toasty, rather, Vials is going to try to get that crafty little grab, and he just gets back a few pixels and uh, just catches Vials. Just as plain as that, plain and simple. And that's a, a play that you usually see from veterans. Meanwhile, it's the rookie making them, and that's such a clutch play. Guts is, oh, a nice stutter stop by Guts. He's oh. going to get out past two. JJ Poole getting returned and uh, boosting it with style for the first cap of the game. Oh, man. Megatron coming in with the stutter steps, too. And he gets a split. Is he gonna? He's going to have to double back and a good smart return by Vials. This should be a reset if all things go well for Boostin. But to just harken back to that cap, Guts showing some immense skill getting past them, and Boostin's OD just let them down. We've got uh, Pycat just narrowly avoiding the return from JJ Poole. He's still swooping in with the Juke Juice. Vials out past uh, one. Got a boost here. Stan with some blocks coming around the corner. Can he get it? No. Oh nice grab God. by Misaki. That would have been great if he somehow managed to get a cap just past one. And JJ Poole has the flag. Vials does not want him to get back to base. Says, no, sir, you are going to get returned. Now Vile's uh, taking his time, making uh, Piecat commit. Then he's going to get past him, swooping in. Toasty swooping out with the flag, sitting by this boost into the corner. And uh, interesting, I guess they're just uh, taking the flags back and forth. Yeah, Vile's was trying uh, a little crafty split. It was his last resort, but uh, it didn't work out. Then he decided to stay on anti, which was smart, considering they are two Red Hot Chili Popper players right around there. But... Wasn't able to really pan out, and the game remains one nothing. And Intercess trying to change that, ducking under. He's got the Juke Juice using it effectively. He's out past two and <gasps> oh. stumbles into the corner. That's you got to think that's lag because I, I can't imagine Intercess would just run into a corner in such a sloppy manner. Meanwhile, Viles gets the Juke. He's got the blocks. Does go. he have the boost though? Maybe. Looks like he's gonna have to pull something out of the hat, and he doesn't. But meanwhile, JJ pulls. He's past one, maybe past two, but he loses all his speed, and that's something that you're gonna see quite often is teams trying to slow the opposing offenders down. It doesn't matter if they get the return, they just need to slow them down a bit. Keeps them a bit more predictable. JJ Poole doing anything but being predictable, boosting it from the top of the map uh, <laughs> where they can't see, but and ends gets, up getting sniped. Gets predictably sniped, <laughs> may I add. By the way, for those who missed it, such as myself, I, I must take a retroactive drink for that first cap of the game. Oh, yes, indeed. 
almost a split there between Intercess and Stan. Viles picking up this tag pro, going to be able to open up a chance here. They're trying to equalize it. Viles is going to lead JJ Poole into the base. <laughs> Guts is holding on to the flag. Yeah, it was a, a good grab by Guts. He recognized there was only one defender and that the opponent... Oh my god! <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about right there. Didn't notice that Stan had the button on the bomb and he ended up dying as a result, leading to the tying cap for Boostin. Such a sad play by Stan. As I call it. Uh, Guts with the flag and going to... Yeah, he should have taken the boost out because he what he did by not taking the boost allows Stan to swoop in from behind and get the snipe. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Now Megatron's here. He's going to try to pull some dangles. It doesn't quite work, but it allows Guts to get out. And unfortunately for Guts, he's not really past anyone. Tried to hit the diagonal to stay ahead. Instead, Ooh. he gets a juke on Intercess. He's past one, maybe past two. He's got some blocks, but he's past he's Everyone's behind everyone. There. Oh my Whoa. god. Guts with a nifty little split, and he's got a tag pro lead if he chooses to use it. Gets a bit too aggressive, <laughs> and perhaps a lack of communication. Doesn't really matter though. Misaki's got the rolling bomb. He's coming in. He's past one. He's past two. He's got the returns, and that right there Whoa. is the second cap of the game for Red Hot Chili Poppers, restoring their lead just as JJ Poole says, no, sir. We're back to a tie game. Wow, two quick drinks there, uh, and they tied it back up again and trying to get another one. Viles is past Guts. Pycat's got to stay alive. Oh, almost <laughs> a nub step there. Oh, man, I would have loved that so much. A lot of quality play going on, and right as I say that, someone does a quality snipe, a self-snipe into the spike, and, ooh, this is looking dangerous. Misaki with such a clutch snipe, and it allows his team to secure the comeback cap. This is Jardim for you, ladies and gentlemen. Back and forth action. And it's managed to say relatively close here. We got another round of power-ups. Uh, you see people fight for a nice spike there from Intercest. Going to be able to pick up that rolling bomb because of it. They got both the power-ups, but it's looking dangerous. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I'm going to suspect there's a lot of lag going on server side because there's no way teams are spiking themselves this often in majors. I know people were talking about weekend seasons, but this is this is next. This is like pub level spiking. No shade meant. And now we've got Viles using this boost off the wall, getting contained. Nice, solid, uh, steady contain here from Misaki and Toasty. Ooh, interesting. Uh, could have been a cab, but Intercess covering the regrab, and it looks like JJ Pool is going to be playing anti here. This could work out. Intercess is, oh my god, oh. such a savvy play by Intercess, using JJ Pool as his wall when the wall wasn't there for him. And now Viles has to stay alive because this is a return for cap situation, and he does just long enough to allow Stan to grab the regrab. And nice snipe from Intercess. Viles closing on Tosi, has got the return. Viles with the boost block. Stan can't quite turn the corner. Masaki is there, and he's going to push oh, Stan no. backwards. Stan doesn't go in for the power up and misses out on a perfect power up for what his situation would have called for, a rolling bomb. But I got to say, prior to that play, Stan had the cap. If only he trusted his teammates. He didn't, and it came back to bite him. See so Guts lining up for a bomb here. Stan chooses to go for the kiss on the Juke Juice, which is an interesting strategy because now they've got a Juke Juice blocker, which if anything could be potentially more dangerous. Viles annihilates the play and currently he leads his team in tags with 13 tags as an offensive player. Not bad. And we've got Viles with the flag now and Guts sitting on that boost. That was an effective strategy and not allowing Viles to do anything uh, <laughs> tricky with that boost there. Yeah, it looks like PyCat is out past three. JJ Pool has to stay alive, but luckily he's got the time and space to do it and keeps the score at bay. Currently three to two in favor of the reigning champions, Red Hot Chili Poppers. PyCat with a very good grab, gonna get out past a few Toasty closing in and chooses to go for the power up instead and they're gonna be able to win that because of that. And oh, could almost hold it for PyCat, but not quite. I think uh, he could have if he wanted to, but being Toasty, he figured, I can hold the flag. What's wrong with that? And now he picks it up with that rolling bomb. And let's see if he can put it to good use. He's uh, got Stan and going to de deploy it, but uh, not really an opportunity to come in for a capping opportunity there. Nope, not an opportunity for an opportunity indeed. <laughs> and we no. are back to double resets. But just as I say that, Stan boosts in, gets a grab, and we can see how fluid the positions are on Jardim. Such a small map that defenders often end up playing offense uh, and vice versa, as I was talking about. Biles currently leading his team in tags. Uh, you got some caps from defenders as well. So it's back and forth and both teams are showing their quality right across the board. 
And the final minute to go here. Pycat coming in, trying to double the lead. He's coming in around the corner. Stan is going to slip by Misaki and Tosi with the flag, looking for a return for Cap as a round of power-ups comes up here. Pycat uh, is not going to be able to pick up that rolling bomb. Intercess getting the return. Misaki out with the rolling of his own. Not too bad. Getting the rolling grab. And as you see right there, oh. a poor, poorly executed bomb, but guts just gets, slips into that boost, and this could be a return for cap situation. It is, Intercess swoops in just in time. Misaki holding an amazing anti-reblock. And there, Viles is going to tie the game, coming around the corner, getting the cap. With 20 tw seconds to go. 20 seconds left, that's another drink. That's our sixth drink of the half. That's not as many as I was expecting, but they're definitely keeping this nice and tight so far. JJ Pools got some blocks, can't slip between guts, but now Viles got a chance as well. He's got four players in base, very congested. Three, two, and with three seconds left, one. teams are just going for the kept flag at this point. It's not going to happen. Going into half number two, both teams are tied. Misaki leading the way, 13 returns and two caps. In terms of team stats, it's pretty, pretty tied so far. Nine power-ups apiece, six minutes against five and a half of prevent. Both of these teams quite well matched up against each other. And coming from two teams that were tied in caps for, caps against, caps differential, standings, wins, I mean... This is about as tight as it gets, and it's staying this way, at least for one other half. All right, looks like we're back. Uh, thanks for hanging with us, guys. We had a bit of an issue with some of the uh, stream smoothness, and so we uh, were pithy behind the scenes uh, tweaking things, and I think we should be back, uh, hopefully, with the better visuals here for you uh, to resume the remaining three halves of play here. And so, Ron, just quickly, uh, going into half, half number two, what did you think of half number one? Uh, so it was an interesting one because uh, half number one was pretty reserved, at least for Jardim, in terms of the number of caps. I was expecting a bit more, but yet it still remained relatively close. So overall, it bounced it out, and I, I'd say it was an okay half. Uh, what about you, Liquid? Some good action both ways, a lot of near caps, and I have to say I was really impressed in the Defenders' OD game on both teams. I mean, you had Stan saving a couple caps, Inter saving a couple caps, and on the other side you had Misaki putting up two of his team's three caps, so the offense coming from the Defenders has been nothing short of stellar, and that's something you always love to see. More offense makes for more entertainment, and having four players who are capable of holding, scoring, and preventing caps, uh, that just means that we're going to be in for another entertaining half number two, I would not be surprised if we had another low scoring one as both these teams Three, are low on air. And it looks like uh, the game has just started uh, the second half here. We're back in action. And just while you guys remember, we've got some jump cup stuff going on, don't we, Ron? Yeah, that we do. The Jump Cup signups are now going to be closing very soon, so this is your final chance to get in. Uh, make sure you follow the channel and type exclamation point jump in chat if you'd like to play. Uh, I think the signups are pretty light, so your chances are looking good. Yep, can't wait to see what these guys put into our Jump Cup Week 2 game. But so far, let's focus on Game 2, or rather Game 1 half 2 here. We've got Misaki struggling a bit with the corners and harkening back to these lag issues could be something going on here with Radius. Yeah, potentially. Uh, let's see. Toasty with the flag doubling back. Uh, Intercess getting the return. A Maybe couple flaccids. flaccids. <laughs> Do we drink for saying the same thing? Oh my god! NU Husky somehow hustles the power up out of the two boosting players and he's going to have to act quickly with the tag bro in base. Intercess is going to lead his team in. And that's going to be a cap for Boost and Dynamo taking the lead back. Very nice play and nice usage of Intercess Type Pro to get that cap. And they're going to still get a little bit of usage out of it as well. Coming in through the team tiles, JJ Poole, uh, Tosi, good positioning, swooping in and getting the return. He had to weave, but now Intercess on the flag carry and JJ Poole switching back to defense. These are familiar positions and it might lead to a familiar play with a cap, but instead, Misaki just gets the rebound tag. And Viles is now waiting on this boost. Smart play tries to catch the second boost. He might go for a corner here. And he goes into the corner, but instead gets returned by Pycat. Great play on OD by Megatron. And JJ Poole getting right past Neo Husky. Viles swooping in as well. Intercess setting up some blocks. JJ Poole trying to use speed to get past Misaki, but unable. Speed is the name of the game. And JJ Poole is one of the players who tends to rely more on his crafty jukes. I think going for speed like that was a good move. And now he manages to secure the tag pro. This could be really dangerous. This is the second tag pro they get this game. And they put the first one to good use. 
Oh, nearly gets a split, but gets returned instead. Putting that juke juice to good use is Misaki. JJ Poole going to Flag Pro, and that might not be bad because he's going to be respawning with that uh, Tag Pro. I don't think he has much time left on it, though. Bomb, very dangerous. Pycat getting the cap, and now they've equalized it yet again, and that's going to be yet another drink. You know what? I actually really do like the play of grabbing with the Tag Pro and respawning in base with, with that live Tag Pro. The problem is it needs to be well executed with the rest of your team. You cannot let the flag out when you make that play because you're, you end up with three people behind the flag and that puts your teammate in a return for cap situation. That's exactly what happened, and they ended up paying for it. So maybe a bit more coordination next time they try that move. Icat uh, doubling back, but Stan not going to bite. JJ Poole boosting in. Stan with the boost block. Masaki with the flaccid, and oh, that's going to be a cap. Boost and Dynamo regaining the lead. You know what I said about team chemistry? Right there is showing that I was wrong. This team has absolutely high levels of chemistry. That right there was an insane play. All three players on the same wavelength, and it leads to a nice cap, putting them ahead. That's another drink for those following along at home. Intercess, ooh, very sneaky play. He's going to grab. Uh, I don't think they were expecting him to grab with that tag pro. Man, that would have been a beautiful split. Regardless, though, as you said, Intercess, little sneaky grab. He had three players, and he faked them all out with a little uh, dipsy doodle with the grab. <laughs> Yes, indeed. And a nice <laughs> spike there on the right-hand side of the map also. If, uh, if you guys want to enter the Jump Cup competition, press exclamation point Dipsy Doodle. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that map would look like. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me any ideas, Ron. So it looks like both teams are going to be patiently waiting for power-ups here. Megatron knows the bomb's up, and instead he's going to try to go for the bomb, and he used fighting for the pup, intercessed putting up a pretty good fight, and uh, Megatron forcing Stan to stay back because uh, he's having none of it. He's just going to go try for the grab instead. Nice bomb or boom snipe there from Toasty. Oh uh, my Pi god! Can. Megatron mm. juggling the three boosts and defenders. Unfortunately, not able to get past the fourth, but regardless, that is an amazing play if I've ever seen one. Toasty's Juke Juice helping him uh, avoid intercess here. Stan's trying to swoop in as well. Vile's pulling a few moves on his own. Uh, watch for the bomb here. Pycat maybe get into the button. Oh, I love that play by Megatron. He's lighting him up so far. Great team chemistry. Decides to bomb the teammate, or rather the boosting player, into his teammate. That's a high level play right there. New Husky oh. closing in for the return. He's got a boost as well. Uh, closing over to stand, containing into the corner, getting the return. Vile's coming out with the flag also. Misaki had to take an educated guess there as to when his team was going to get a return. And I thought for sure he was going to get it, but the team just wasn't able to deliver quite quick enough Woo! for him. It doesn't matter. Toshi loops around and gets a cap, gets his team back in the game with a tie. Stan grabs the rather rolling bomb, the rolling boom, and uh, gets a defuse right immediately. And Pycat's out past a couple, but JJ Poole is there to get the return. Intercessed going right into Misaki. JJ Poole coming as well. Now we're seeing this high paced action that we were promised for this map. Neo Husky's Tag Pro runs out. Interesting play by Intercess. It looked like if he just boosted into the corner, he would have had the cap there. Instead, he tries a crafty boost. And speaking of crafty boost, JJ Poole chaining the boost together in what is a high skill boost. Uh, wasn't able to quite part the Red Sea there though, but uh, doesn't matter. The score is tied. There's plenty of room for more action. As Toasty grabs the flag, the offender turns the fender is back on oh, offense. He's back on goodness. the cap, squeezes past Viles and puts his team in the lead. I love that. You just saw both defenders, uh, Pycat and Misaki, uh, blocking out JJ Poole and Viles. Uh, had him in the both. Uh, they both had him blocked out to the left hand side of the map, and there was nothing they could do. <laughs> they were just stuck. And this is a typical wormy situation where you see literally every player on the map fighting for a power-up. Megatron decides he's having none of it and goes for the grab and nearly works out in his favor, but now Intercess is going to be helping Ooh. Stan out in base. This is a return for cap situation, virtually. Dangerous for Megatron's going to have to stay alive. Instead, he gets hit by Toasty, and that's going to lead to a quick cap for boost and bringing his team back into the game is Stan. And now JJ Poole, they're looking to get the lead, but now the tables have turned. Toasty's got the boost off the wall. Cool. Viles swooping up and getting right in his way, preventing the cap. Viles with its patented OD, but now he goes for a quick flaccid grab. NU Husky with the double. Whoa. Oh, the triple stutter step. NU Husky coming in for the go ahead cap. What a play. And that's yet another drink, but what an amazing uh, triple cutback there from Neo Husky. And now Pycat coming in as well. One cap advantage off of that flashy cap. You know what? That's been the difference maker so far. 
Red Hot Chili Poppers have NEU Husky on their team right now, as opposed to have number one, and he's been lighting them up. Misaki grabs the Tag Pro. This could, he has to get into base quick enough for it to make a difference. Instead, he chooses to grab probably the smart play to make in that situation because with no reset, Tag Pros are virtually useless. And speaking of useless Tag Pros, Misaki, yeah, with that flag, I guess that's what you were just saying. So <laughs> yeah. um, reiterating it, though, it's especially <laughs> useless. <laughs> yeah. And JJ Poole is going to try to come in with a bounce boost. Intercess tries to help him out, but couldn't quite get the return in time. And we're back to two flag carriers out. With a, an interesting forced kiss by Toasty, Ooh. this might b come back to bite him. He has to go, Bile has to go right, nearly gets the angle, but Toasty was having none of it, just goes for the straight line, reduces the angle, and plays his geometry just right. Usain Dynamo trying very hard to tie it up here. They've just got two minutes to go. He's got the flag going to do a nice uh, double move. Cut back. Intercessia has the bomb. Watch for something creative here. JJ Poole with the boost Ooh. and the bomb. Very well coordinated, but Neo Husky is right in the right spot to get that return. Oh my god. Oh. I was so disappointed for JJ Poole there. He had the perfect boost and nearly worked out for him. Intercess is going to help. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> Overkill. That's Kills a all four of the uh, RHCP and gets the cap. Very uh, excellent usage of that tag pro. Will he get more? Intercess has been on fire with his tag pro so far. He's got 20 tags this half. <laughs> and over half of them have come from the tag pro. And now we have a tie game. Intercess getting the return. Viles with the flag. Gonna double back. Masaki trying to get the solo return. Forces him into a spike. One minute and 10 seconds to go. And we have a tie game. So many spikes this half, though. Or rather, this game, this yeah. entire game. You've been seeing so many players just either missing boosts or hitting corners or hitting spikes. I'm not sure what's up. What's going on? If anyone has any info, please enlighten me. Files, nice oh, sneaky. job squeaking past Misaki. So cheeky, so cheeky. And Inter uh -oh. with another one of his tag pros, you know what that means. That means a tag pro lead, and he's actually, he might put it to good use with a return. Instead, it seems like a return for Cap in the other direction. Woo. Both directions, really. And, and they're just, just escaping. Look at Toasty playing the angles. <laughs> he gets oh, no. it! It's going to be that a is... Cap after Toasty's incredible boost. Wait, what? Oh, he missed the flag and almost missed the cap. Doubles back and gets it. By the way, that's a two drinks for those of you playing at home for the nub step. Oh my god, I, I have no idea what's going on. This is chaos, pure, unadulterated chaos. And this One could cap be, lead. This could be a nub. This could be a nub. Not quite. Uh, looks like Boost and Dynamo might lose Three, this one. Four seconds two, to go. And they four. can they get the return? No, not going to do it. And uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers is, Poppers is going to come away with the lead uh, and the win for game one. And look at this. Toasty putting up another two caps. That's four caps for defenders, I believe, so far for the Red Hot Chili Poppers. That's some amazing support play coming from the D. And that's what they needed. Coming in with a one cap victory, the slimmest of margins. But a margin is a margin. That's game one is taken by the Red Hot Chili Poppers, extending their season record to three wins, zero losses. And I believe in honor of the champions here, we should be chugging our beers. Yes, let's uh, have a chug of champions, as it were. Absolutely. Here we go. Delicious. Ah, yes, indeed. Well, we're, um, I think we got Jump Cup coming up as well. Uh, just getting the final uh, people in place. I uh, want to do a thank you for the Bob 18 for helping us uh, get these players and select them. Winners are Protagonist, Obama, Activia, and Saint Defense. I have a feeling a few of these players are using alt names. So we will just be calling them by their alt names. That's true. I mean, they joined with those names, so that's yeah, what it's going to be. Yeah, who is this kid anyway? Must be a Smurf. Could be. I guess we'll see. Well, um, I'm trying to Pro look at what never this... heard of that guy before. Obama? What was the, sc <laughs> what was the score last week? I'm, I'm trying to remember what uh, what they're looking to beat. Oh, Let's man, see. that's a good question. I believe the score... I know F-U-C-K took the victory last week, and I believe yeah. he was in the triple digits. 142, that's the mark to beat right now if they want to be uh, the top of the leaderboard. Well, that's going to be a tough m mark to beat because you've got 
a lot of competitors here and they know what to expect from the map. There's going to be some tough jostling for the power-ups. Three, two, one. And they're jumping. Here we have it. Yet another uh, Jump Cup Halftime Challenge kicking off. Uh, there were a couple players going for the tall boy, but uh, no one slipped in yet. Activia may be the first. Yes, Activia is going to be able to get a lot of power-ups oh, and take the lead. Activia downs the pine first try. Does he get it again? He does. Oh, that's basically 60 power-ups right there for Activia. He's thirsty tonight. St. Defenses as well, and he's also just got another top by once, but Activia just keeps going time and time again. When will this madness end? Oh, the bombs. Obama, you got bomb in your name, man. <laughs> I believe Obama's also the one who got stuck in the portal's bottom left. Gotta love when that happens. Well, there we go. Obama ended up uh, spiking uh, Activia into the spikes with the boom. And uh, go, going down himself. Man, you were talking that the record was 142. Activia's already got 148, and we're only halfway through. Wow. Things seem to be slowing down now. It's clear they're starting to figure out how to counter the pint strat. Yes, that's yes, what indeed. I love to see. And now Obama looking to go straight down. Yes, uncontested. Uh, missed a couple power-ups there, uh, but he's slowly coming in towards Activia. Nice use of bombs there. Uh, the power-ups hadn't spawned yet, so he hits the bombs so that uh, he can actually get some. But Activia with a full sip. And with 30 seconds left, left Activia has a commanding lead. It's going to take a miracle for his contestants to get back in the game, especially after that pint right there. And yet another pint racked up for Activia. Nice <laughs> bombs there from Protag. Protag taking one for the team. His score, if you guys had the scoreboard open, his score is actually minus 15 pro tag, so he's really just helping out at this point. <laughs> Three, two, one. And that'll be the final seconds winding down, and Activia, congratulations, you are now the Jump Cup champion with 243 power-ups, and that's interesting because that is uh, 101 more than uh, last week's champion, F-U-C-K. And Jump Cup 101, get that pint in. Yes, the pint is very clear, and it was interesting that we're seeing people jump in and uh, use those bombs uh, and even sacrifice themselves. Yeah, it's something that uh, they started picking up on as the game went on, is using the bombs to their advantage rather than just letting players stream down the pint. Now, for those of you following at home, the pint itself, you can't see from the texture pack, but is lined with bombs as walls, and so that uh, players can often use that to try to push the... The player's inside the pint, out of the pint, and it worked a few times there, so something we love to see. Now, well, uh, going into game two, oh yeah, good point. Yeah, real quick, I want to get a couple thank yous in. Uh, thank you to Indie Developer for having the super map uh, user script, which helped us uh, overlay those uh, solo cups and the tall boy. Uh, thank you to the 18 for running the uh, Sea Flakes, also helped, helped us with a bit of script support, getting us uh, the... Um, bars that uh, track along progress and this week thank you to firefox quantum uh, for improving the performance and uh, helping us get that buttery smooth action buttery smooth indeed now going into half number two so rather game number two it looks like boosting is going to be lining up with the same starting four roster which is to be expected these guys have years basically of chemistry together playing together in u.s contenders playing together on boost and dynamo so there's no way they're going to be changing that up but it seems like we might be seeing some roster changes on the Red Hot Chili Popper side, which is curious considering they just won with this roster. Uh, we're seeing PyCat, so Megatron, NEU Husky, and Toasty in the group, but we're not sure if Misaki is going to be in or out. I'm not sure if it's lag or Captain's decision. Uh, I'd be surprised if it were Captain's decision because Misaki was putting up some pretty amazing plays out there. Yeah, he's playing pretty well, so uh, I don't know. Hopefully everything's going all right for him. I, I don't know if there's uh, any power surges in his area relatively recently. But, uh, yeah, so far the fourth player still waiting to see who that's going to be. Or maybe this is just Tantru. He's so confident in his team's ability, he's just going to go 3v4. I can see that being the case, too. Who do you think would win this 3v4? 3v4? Ah, uh, jeez, that's... That's obviously going to Red Hot be, Chili Poppers. Yeah. Obviously. You think so? <laughs> obviously, yeah. I mean, 3v4. The team with 3 always has the advantage. Less less teammates to keep <laughs> into account, you know? You don't have to... Now, what if they had 3 plus, 3 plus a bot versus 4? 
Hmm. That'd be That's an interesting, interesting one. Question. Yeah. Or three bots versus four players. <laughs> well, the score might just be 0-0, zero, zero, to be honest, because the bots are never <laughs> going to score. That is true. Uh, bots are famously good at defense, but uh, not particularly uh, good at offense. It's a bit more difficult. Yeah. I don't know. What about three bots and grief seeds? Sorry, I just had to crack another one open there. <laughs> Gotta love it. Is it the three same type of beer? Seeds. Yes, uh, still going strong with the Lagunitas IPA. Nice. I've got a second raft man out here. Uh, halfway through. It's been good. It's been treating me well. Uh, so, the you gotta let me know. The smoked, uh, is that is that a good thing or a bad thing to have that uh, smoked ale? I mean, if there were a fire detector in my mouth, it would be going off right now. <laughs> I, is that good or bad? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it just so, is. <laughs> it's a it's a fact of life. Three, two, so we're starting one. game two. It looks like Misaki's back, so it must have just been a, a temporary internet issue or something. And uh, <laughs> we've got a bit of a temporary spike issue for Misaki, or rather NU Husky here as well. And it's not just temporary. We were seeing that last uh, game, and we're still seeing it this game. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we're still seeing some leg issues. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe people are getting rusty. Yeah, this is, uh, they were talking about a weekend season, maybe this is what they're talking about. And Megatron nearly gets a split, instead Stan just gets him just by a pixel. Stan I not, not letting him buy that quickly or easily. You know, I think I know what it is. I think, uh, these players may not have paid for the, uh, enhanced smaller spike upgrade. Oh, that's gotta be what it is. Yeah. Fatal mistake. So, action seems to have calmed down a bit here. Um... After 50 seconds gone, it seems like teams are going to have to go try to fight for power-ups. Megatron and Intercess fighting for the base power. Intercess has the advantage of having the boost, so Megatron is going to have to perfect his timing. And oh my god, NU Husky tries to help out. We don't know who really won that power-up, but in the end it didn't really matter considering <laughs> it was a rolling bomb. It got immediately defused. Now on the other end, JJ Pool is going to do his patented grab with the tag pro, spawn in base, and try to get a couple of tags, but instead Viles leaves him stranded in base, and now we're back to square one. JJ Pool Still has that tag, bro? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Uh, I understand grabbing with the tag for when you have a teammate in base, but this is <laughs> this is some next level strats by JJ Pool. He's playing the mind games. He may at this point he may be playing mind games with himself. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, he knows what he's doing. I, I trust in JJ Pool. I believe. Oh, nearly, nearly a nice boost block by Viles, and now action in the other base seems to have calmed down as well. Defenses are absolutely holding things down so far. This is not Jardim, and this you can tell quite easily. And now we've got players waiting for the power-ups. New Husky in the corner, rolling bomb again. Couldn't tell who got it, but we did see Misaki pick up a rolling bomb of his own. Uh, he's interestingly... Okay, oh, there he Megatron. goes. Oh, Megatron! Gets past Intercess, he's gonna... Oh man! He fakes the boost, comes in, gets the cap, opens the score for Red Hot Chili Poppers. Megatron playing like a veteran. Oh no! And there's another cap, they've evened it up. Uh, the reason I say oh no is he had that uh, rolling bomb, but boy, that didn't do much of a good good for him. Oh uh, no, it didn't do much of a good at all. Um, <laughs> you got some good back and forth action, just like last game. Get a cap, nope, get a, gap, uh, a cap to equalize it right away. Evening things up, and it looks like an interesting play by JJ Pool playing the hand off to Stan, but Stan couldn't quite capitalize, and uh, we're back to two resets. Seeing much of a flaccid's happening up in the bottom left base. Viles with the flag. JJ Pool with some good blocks. Viles oh. is going to get past Neo Husky. He's just past one, but now past two because of the power ups, and he tries to go straight in at the flag. Not going to fool the Red Hot Chili Poppers. He was hoping for a mistake, but at this level, players rarely make the mistakes that you want them to make. And he doesn't get it in his favor. Just trying to force it in, and that's not going to work against Red Hot. Seeing some pretty competent defense <laughs> on this map. Only two caps. Vials bullies the Red Hot Chili Popper player right into the spikes. I believe it was Megatron. Vials says you cap on us. We're going to bully you. He tried it again with Pycat there, but uh, Pycat was not in the right spot. Neo oh. Husky. Cool. Wow. Almost getting around that wall. Yeah. Luckily, Boosin has two defenders. And so even if you just juke one, that's not going to really work out. The tough part is the walls don't move. Yeah, 
See, that's what we need. We need moving walls. And also, we need Ooh. new strats. We need strats that don't involve two defenders. That way, you can pull these off. We need another four O's of the Apocalypse. Oh, man. Vials gets past two. Oh, here we go. JG Pool's got a tag, bro. He's not going to help Chase. And now, with Watch the tag the on the block. other base, this is... Uh, this is precarious, and in oh. fact, it's so precarious, any you Husky is going to take it the other way, and barring a miracle, this is going to be a cap, putting Red Hot Chili Poppers ahead by one. JJ Pool still got a couple seconds left on this Tag Pro, and it runs out right when he needed it. Tosi, whoa, Stan somehow stays alive there. He's got a boost. Oh. Very nice job by Stan. He's up as a couple. Watch out for the snipe from Toasty. Oh my goodness, Stan somehow stays alive. Doesn't spike himself, and now he's got a bit of time to think and uh, figure out his approach. Yeah, taking the philosophical route here. He he's literally nice just sitting there. A good boost, <laughs> and it looks, I thought it was lagging out for a second. He was just floating around there. I guess, like, make the other team commit. Uh, AFK and then, strats. That's a yeah. new MLTP meta. Ooh, Tosi, nice job there. Not uh, re uh, He read that stutter step and closed in on it. So both teams getting, securing a juke juice apiece. If I were Vials, I'd just give the flag to JJ Pool. And that's exactly what he does. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it was intentional or not, but JJ Pool's past one, perhaps past two, instead doubles back. Oh, oh gets a split. Oh my god! Gets the juke in base. That's a cap. Putting Boost and died in JJ Pool showing some fancy moves. Absolutely fantastic blocks by Stan. Intercess as well with a good uh, boost block, forcing the flaccid. Vials has a chance here. He's maybe past Tosi. He's got the boost out the wall. Stan with the blocks yet again. Vials doubling back, and he's got to take a couple laps here. But holy cow, nice momentum sh shift here from Boost and Dynamo. Oh, man. Vials is just so silky smooth right now with the flag. No one can touch him. But at this point, he's still behind three. And with NEU playing anti, there's no reason for our Red Hot Chili Poppers to be grabbing right now. They just need to play it patiently. They are being patient, as is Vials. A nice double move here down to the corner, looking for some power-ups. Rolling Bomb comes up. Vials is now pushing it into base. There's another spike off the wall, but PyCat's there, and this tag pro in base going to be very difficult. Vials wants to take another lap, but doesn't have the ability to do so. And that had to be like a minute-long hold. Credit to Vials for staying alive that long. That was insane skill. The silky smooth jukes. You must be playing with Firefox Quantum. <laughs> <laughs> Intercess getting the solo return. Stan trying the same, but Tosi's too crafty for that. Intercess instead has to use the boost to get the snipe, and they've got the reset. Pycat going to Flaccid, and now things have slowed down uh, just for a little bit. Another round of power ups, maybe 20 seconds to go for that. And another close game. This matchup is delivering on its promise. The two best teams in the league are nearly inseparable. Vials stuttering past Toshi, but again, couldn't get past that spike. And now JJ Poole is uh, getting a venge spike in as well. Intercess hesitating between the boost and the juke juice. He opts for the juke juice. This could come back to bite him, but he's back in time to get the return. Or rather, maybe not. Oh, oh man, just in time. Using the Juke Juice to his advantage, and Toasty was looming there on the boost. Inter tries to boost NEU into the his teammate on the boost, <laughs> and PyCat choosing, opting for the, the handoff, long range handoff. That's a, a new strategy. You know, I'm glad we don't have a, a rule for a drink every spike, because uh, we'd be pretty blasted right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think the spike has more returns than any individual player so far? Uh, it's going to be getting pretty close. And that's what we need. We need, uh, I believe it might have been Loj suggesting, uh, just on the tag for separate, that we need stats on. I think it was Ty suggesting how many boosts and bombs and spikes every player has or uses. Uh, that's something that I'd love to see for this game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another round of power-ups coming up. Uh, Tosi and Neo are going to double team. Tosi's going to pick up that Juke Juice, stand with the tag pro, and uh, using it effectively already. Oh, and you so close to getting the grab, but now with the tag pro in base, it's going to be nearly impossible for him to get the flag out. But Stan chooses to go on offense. Probably a smart decision, considering they've been having such trouble getting out of base. And now with Stan there, Vials gets the rub grab, and he's past two. Oh, wow. Tosi just jetting off to the side, swooping back in, getting the return past that tag pro. Excellent work by Tosi. No kidding. That was his 17th tag. He's already up to 18 returns in the half right now. Guy is not Hi, kidding around. Doing the weave, getting past a couple. He's got the boost and trying to slip right between Vials. Gets returned. Very close one. We've got a tie game coming into the final minute of the first half.
and Biles with this patented offensive defense gets the sandwich block in and uh, prevents the cap. That was a beautiful move by PyCat. Too bad for Megatron that he was facing off against the OD God Biles. Posty with a good solo return there on JJ Poole, uh, who was going to be out past three if uh, Toasty did not get that return. And okay then, if you do not approve of me naming him the OD God, then please feel free to prove that you're the OD God and sign up for MLTP. Nice job by Stan, preventing the snipe from behind, and now he loops back in front. Stan trying to lead in the victory cap. There it is, and now Boosin Dynamo takes the lead, three to two. Some great coordination. That's where you see the teamwork shine from Boostin. Stan being trusted to get the tag pro returns properly, and Intercess being trusted to get the solo. And with three offensive defense players and only two Boostin players, uh, they use the tag pro marvelously to get that lead back. Final 10 seconds to go here. Both teams looking to try for one final grab. Neo needed that boost, didn't get it quite in time. JJ Poole getting returned. Three, and that's two, going to be it. Uh, boost and Dynamo at the last minute uh, getting a one cap lead. And Intercess padding his stats with his 14th return. If you look at the team stats, Boosin had nearly two or over two minutes more prevent than the Red Hot Chili Poppers. And that right there just offers them more opportunities to cap. On top of that, they double up on power ups, 12 power ups to six. So that right there just gives them way more opportunities to try to get those caps in. And even though the lead is slim, it remains a lead, three caps to two. And sometimes that's the only difference maker. You look at game one, one cap can make all the difference. And going to have two, they definitely have the momentum their way. Now, Ron, forget about performances. In terms of entertainment value, what did you think? <laughs> Boy, I'm going to have to say that was the most exciting half uh, of this stream so far. Uh, we saw... Really? It, yes, wow. we, it went back and forth a couple times, and I I didn't know... The, the spikes in particular were, were very interesting because they were the X factor in, in this half for me. Uh, and uh, it really is interesting that it's still remaining a, a competitive game uh, between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, in terms of competitiveness, it was there, but I just I missed the flashy plays. There wasn't enough action. There were maybe six or seven capping opportunities and we saw five caps off of them. So some good effectiveness by the teams, but by both teams really putting in the caps where they got the opportunities to. But we're seeing some really sound tag pro being played on Rush. And I think a byproduct of that is, or a big reason for that rather, is that this map has been played several times in MLTP before. So these players know how the map goes. They can kind of figure out what exactly the routes are, the boosts are. They know the boost lanes, the bomb lanes. Actually scratch that there's no bombs on rush but they know all the lanes they know all the plays and at least have way fewer errors than you'll see on jardim jardim is still new and fresh enough that players are still trying new things and sometimes that doesn't quite work out it leads to a lot of chaos rush doesn't quite have that same factor if you ask me yeah you're seeing the defenders uh, work a little bit more fluently together uh, they're having an easier time containing with each other, uh, swooping in. Although we did see that one minute hold from Viles, if I remember correctly. That was an interesting one. Yeah. Um, but it, maybe that was paired with an anti? It was. So Viles had a minute hold because Red Hot Chili Poppers were in no rush to get a return. Uh, they were just playing it safe, playing some OD, staying behind the flag carrier. And yes, they did get juked a few times, not gonna lie. But they <laughs> always made sure that if they did get juked, it was in a non -threat, sorry, non-threatening position. And that's the difference between Jardim and Rush is that there are non-threatening positions on Rush. When you're on Jardim and you're free anywhere on the map, that's dangerous. Now going into half two, it looks like both teams are going to be sticking with the same lineup that they've had for the past couple halves. What do you think of that decision, Ron? I think it's been working out for him this game. They've proven that they're very competitive. Uh, we've only seen a one cap differential between the two games. Uh, it was uh, Red Hot Chili Poppers that came ahead with the one cap last game. And so far in this game, we're seeing that coming from Boost and Dynamo. Clearly a very even matchup. Uh, it's really anyone's game going into half two. Yeah, no kidding. And half two should be an entertaining one with Red Hot Chili Poppers for the first time entering a half uh, not with the lead or rather behind uh, What's the opposite of in the lead? Trailing? Yes. It's about as far opposite from in the lead as you can be. <laughs> Who's going to cap first? Let, let's let's make a bet, Ron. Okay. Um, I think it's going to be Red Hot Chili Poppers. They're going to tie it up. Okay. Which player is going to cap first? Oh, jeez. Okay. I'm going to go... Well, let's keep with. this. Let's make this interesting. If the player you predict caps first, I chug the rest of my beer. 
On the flip side, if the player I predict cap first, then you chug yours. Okay, you, I'm you taking go... this? Let's see. I, I think I could do it. Um, let me... I'm going to go uh, Neo, Hus Neo Husky. Oh, man, that's a good bet. So you're, you're calling the comeback, eh? Calling the comeback. Calling the, well, at least the tie. I don't, I don't know if they're going to come back, but they're going to equalize it. You know what? I'm going to go for a wild card. I'm going to say Stan, the defender. Stan, the man. He's going to get that cap in. Extend their lead to two. Very bold strategy there. Yeah. Let's see if it works out. Sounds like both teams are ready. We should be commencing with the final half of Tag Pro uh, as long as there's not a tie, which I, we were dangerously close to a tie in the in the first game, yeah. uh, having to go to overtime. Yeah, the new overtime rules are interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if they're new for this season, but they're definitely new for, for, from a few seasons ago. No more ties in MLTP, eh, Ron? Yeah, uh, we used to have the ties, and now we're going to overtimes. Uh, I think... I enjoy that, at least from a stream perspective, to be able to uh, have that actually get resolved. It's If this ended in a tie, it would the whole evening would feel kind of like a wash, and it'd be uh, really interesting to know who would have actually won that game. So I like that they let them play it out. What's interesting is any stats accumulated in overtime do not count towards your season stats. And that's Three, a debate that's been had on the two, subreddit just this week, yeah, yeah. and uh, opinion's pretty split on that. Currently, as I said, they are not counted, and so should this go to overtime, the only difference uh, in the scoreboard will be the cap differential for the teams. Now we kick off action in half number two with a bunch of flaccids and a bully spike from Stan. Stan, are you going to switch to offense for me? Switch to offense, <laughs> we'll bud? see. Uh, Neil is coming into base right now, uh, waiting for this boost, pushing off against Intercest. It looks like uh, both our players just... Getting a little <laughs> hug in right there. And Ooh, look Megatron this. looks like he's got the boost. He's going to be past two. Interesting corner. I don't think that's what he intended. And he gets returned by Intercest. And now Neo with the flag. He's looking to come into base. He's got four players to go up against Intercest. Oh. Trying for the snipe. Kid just misses it. NEU being crafty. He sees Intercest with the long range snipe and just plays it perfectly. Hides behind the corner. Ooh. And again, uses the corners to his advantage. He might have the boost. He chooses not to use it. He's going to go for the bottom boost. He will. But he's got nowhere to go. He's got to double back. He's behind four. And now Megatron's got a rolling bomb on Riga. Maybe he'll just spike himself. Yeah, he should be a bit more aggressive. There we go. Getting the return. Uh, Piecat with the flag with the rolling bomb. Going to defuse it here. Yeah, I don't see much uh, options for him. If I were an NU Husky in that situation, I would have doubled all the way back into base and then died, like been chased right into the spikes or right into a return back in base. Yeah. But just a second here. Intercess, he's past two. And does he have the back boost? He nearly does, but not quite. And by what I was getting at is by coming back to base and dying, immediately the rolling bomb on the flag is past one, maybe even past two, depending on how many chasers and you Husky had. Instead, he died mid-map. And it didn't really put uh, his re-grab PyCat past anyone. And so it was a bit of a useless suicide play. Now, JJ Pool being a bit dangerous, coming back into base here, trying for a boost combo, gonna get pushed up. They've still got the contain. Misaki, Misaki. ooh, rolling bomb up for Toasty. Yeah, that was a smart play by Misaki. Not only putting himself pup side, but also getting the return and allowing his teammate to grab the rolling bomb. It didn't pan out, but that's the kind of play that gets you wins if you do it again and again. And intercess with the flag, trying to pull something off with this boost, maybe. Uh, again, being very patient, allowing JJ Poole to open it up, and Viles with the block as well. A very good coordination and teamwork, uh, giving Boost and Dynamo a lead of two. And that was interesting. Red Hot Chili Poppers chose to play the anti-regrab, and when you do that, you have to have three really solid offensive defensemen. And uh, they get fooled by Intercess' clever diagonal boost. That ends up costing them, but it looks like they might be back in here. And you Husky getting returned last second by some good OD from JJ Poole. And Pycat with a bit of patience here, waiting for his teammate to get on regrab or maybe even collect a pup, but that could be dangerous as Viles getting us. <laughs> uh, Toasty with some good solo defense here, uh, but no, just as I say that, Viles is able to slip back. No, he's not. Toasty doubles back and gets a return. <laughs> and so Misaki's going to try to catch JJ Pool. JJ Pool just slips through the little spike place, and I I'd say any of you, the best bet is to kiss there. Yeah, Misaki good is going to try to leverage his juke juice, but it's running out and gets a little diagonal juke on Stan, but JJ Pool is having none uh -oh. of it. And now Intercess only has one to juke. 
Pycat comes in and we've got, oh, oh my god, we've got some amazing blocks is what we've got. Intercess his second cap of the half, brings the lead to three and it looks like if Viles hadn't hit that diagonal or rather that corner, it might have been a four cap lead. Fantastic Houston. patience there and uh, Stan uh, with some very solid blocks hitting the critical block there to secure the cap. Boosted coming in with some revenge, not too happy with the game one result. They're back here with a vengeance. And we've got another round of power-ups. Tosi fighting Intercess pretty effectively, but now Intercess is going to try to use this team boost. And Tosi is going to be able to pick it up unscathed with that rolling bomb. Going to boost in and try to use it for uh, opening up a grabbing opportunity, which he has. But uh, having a little, let's uh, see, taking his time. Nice patience here from Tosi. Pycat giving him a little bit of an encouraging boost from behind. He had a rolling bomb on Regab, chooses not to die quickly enough, and the rolling bomb gets defused, but it might not matter here. Oh, oh my god, Eddie Yu manages to somehow weave through those pixel perfect gaps and get the cap in for his team, bringing the lead down to two. Yes, Amazing play by Eddie Yu. And now Pycat trying to get another cap. He's got a team boost into the bottom corner. Intercess is going to come out with the flag. And something we're seeing from both teams, almost every play here is an anti-regrab. And this could come back and help boost in. Intercess, all he needs is a little patience and instead Toasty's back here and gets the return. But that anti-regrab has been so crucial for these teams. And it's something that we're seeing a lot, way more than we did on Jardim. And Neo I think Husky uh, wins the Juke Juice. Uh, there's a rolling bomb in the bottom right that got diffused. And uh, Neo's gonna come on offense with that. Uh, it would make sense. Waiting for this boost. Yeah, it looks like uh, making the right decision, getting the grab in, getting the boost Ooh. in. Whoa. And oh man, if he had the right bounce, it could have worked. But JJ Poole reading the handoff perfectly gets past two, and now we've got a chase vest on our hands. Maybe even a kiss. Nope, they didn't want it. JJ Poole coming up into base and going to get uh, past a couple. Would have been a good kiss for any of you. But yeah. uh, at this point, it's a good kiss for JJ. Oh, intercessed, lining up that snipe. He was prepared for that and got a nice, uh, effective reset. Now, currently, the aggregate score is one cap in favor of Boostin, if you count game one score into the mix. And so, by Tantra's rules, Boostin's winning right now. So, he's going to want his team to catch up here a bit. And, oh, oh my boy. God, Boostin might be back to another lead. Vile just comes yes. in unchallenged. Stan with a perfect block. Intercess eliminating the rest of the opposition. And this tag could serve even further, if only for a little more patience from JJ Poole. JJ Poole tries to rush it in and ruins the chance to extend the lead to three, or rather four. Uh, just three, I think. Currently, it is three, yes. Yes. Oh, I see. Uh, well, Pycat looking to come in, and now it is just two. Nice job by Pycat. Was that an upstep? Oh man, I have to admit I was paying attention to the other side of the screen just as the lead almost goes down to one, and I'm we've got count. a bit of a change of uh, a bit of a change of momentum here. Red Hot Chili Popper is getting back into the game. Yeah, I'm gonna count that one as an up step. Two drinks uh, it is, guys. Two drinks, three minutes, two caps. And Intercess just bullying players into the spikes left, right, and center, and gets to the tag, bro. What a clutch grab on that tag, bro. He's and he's being defense. conservative. Yeah, just sitting right on the flag. That's a strat that we don't see very often. Uh, very passive. I mean, hey, they've got the lead. They can afford to just sit back and relax. They've got two yeah. minutes 40 left. That's enough for a comeback. Um, I wouldn't be so sure of it. Neo fighting Stan and a very effective pie cool. gets out. He's boosting straight at the flag. Masaki with the block, but uh, he was just swooping in a little bit too early. If he could have uh, had a bit more time, could have let that block establish itself. Three words. Oh, D, God. <laughs> oh, man. Intercess with another snipe from above. Yeah, Intercess has been on fire so far. Nine tags, two caps. He's been doing it all for boosting. And what I'm seeing is he's he's thinking uh, he's playing 9D chess here. He's thinking a couple <laughs> steps ahead and was ready to swoop in even before the grab happened so that as soon as that happened, he was there. He's been playing 9D backgammon. Just a second. JJ Poole. Oh, he nearly had it, but he noticed that he didn't have the edge on 10 or rather on Toasty. And Toasty gets that little spawn kill quite cheeky. 
<laughs> yeah, Interest has playing 9D backgammon while everyone else is playing 2D Candyland, so <laughs> something something fishy's going on. JJ Pool out past a couple. Toasty as well. JJ Pool doubling back, maybe thinking kiss, but uh, Neo is going to pick up the flag. Watch this boost from Intercess. Oh no, he couldn't quite <laughs> get the angle. And oh, <laughs> we saw an interesting boost into the spikes there uh, by Toasty. Yeah, Saudi was trying to do, but it didn't uh, pay off. <laughs> now he was playing mental games. He's boosting into the spikes to, to throw boosting off their game. And <laughs> speaking of boosting into people, uh, boosting just boosts. A boost and boost boost into his teammate a lot of boosts here uh they've got the lead by two caps 55 seconds oh to go final God. round of pops is going to be critical and intercess just destroying the red hot chili poppers with that tag pro and this is the perfect balance you got one tag pro on offense one on defense and jj pool not quite sure how to get this grab out oh, he yeah. does they're past two maybe past three toshi's gonna have to boost ahead and he's jj oh. pool chooses to stay behind intercess spikes himself but Stan's got the backup blocked, and this is another cap for Boostin, who are taking the driver's seat in this game with 30 seconds left. This could be another, but oh no, Spikes himself. <laughs> Those spikes proving to be uh, a critical factor yet again. Uh, there they go, a f fourth time. Toasty with the flag, and Stan with a nice snake from behind. This is ridiculous. Either way, Boostin with 10 seconds left are gonna take game two, and that's gonna be a split for these teams. Still inseparable in the standings. Three wins, two, one loss, one. and an amazing performance from Intercess. 19 tags, two caps, and four power-ups to top it off. Boost and Dynamo takes game two. Very interesting half. I liked what I was seeing uh, Intercessed. Man, it just seemed like he was uh, he might have been donating a bit more than everyone else because he was getting all the tag pros that half. Yeah, but I mean, credit to him. He earned them. All the tag pros he got, he got them 2v1, and that's something that has to be mentioned. I, I think you can't just take that for granted. Now, so, uh, Liquid, what do you think of the second half? I know the first half uh, le left a little bit to be desired for you. Uh, did that pick up any in the second half? You know what? The second half was amazing. I was not a fan of the first half. Boring stuff. Second half was a lot more exciting. Uh, if you had to ask me for an MVP, I'd say the MVP was the trusty old Spike. Did its job perfectly, <laughs> never saw it make a mistake, um, and it provided probably the most entertainment so far. We saw some really good plays too, some amazing caps, but one that comes to mind is NEU Huskies just weave through those OD players and just use the pixels to his advantage, managed to get in with a pixel to spare. But you saw some amazing plays, I have to single out Stan for praise for his blocks. He had at yes. least two or three caps that wouldn't have happened without one of his solid, complete dominating blocks, and you gotta give him credit for that. Now let's see if we can get any interviews in here. I'd love to talk to Tantru, but I'm not sure if he's online right now. I don't see him. If he's online, he might have a different name. But uh, yeah, Liquid uh, looking for that. Uh, stick around, folks. We've got the... Uh, we'll find someone from the winning team to interview. Uh, after that very exciting game, uh, it was... Oh, who are we back with? Liquid, Did you were you able to find anyone? I believe so. Excellent. Question is, how long will it take them to get into the channel? <laughs> we have a, a maze as to how to get into here you have to answer questions. We've oh, got that's a true. Little troll preventing you from coming in. Uh, we have a Sphinx actually set up. You have to answer his rules three. <laughs> hey, Tantru, welcome to the Shot Color stream, and congratulations on the split and the game one win. What did you think of your team's performance this game, or this week, rather? Hold on, there's someone in my room. Give me a second. Let me kick them out. Yeah, that's always <laughs> a well-advised move. Kicking out non-tag pro players, I just don't understand. All right, my bad. I, I got him away. All right, what was the question? What did you think of your team's performance this week? Uh, it was decent. Uh, New Husky was sort of late, so Guts had to fill in, but things went fine. Um, in terms of everyone else on the team, Toasty did pretty well in terms of leading the communication, and Megatron had some good communications on offense, and uh, they're good enough to create plays, and uh, they felt confident enough that Megatron even voted on the game-winning cap in game one. <laughs> um, but they are pretty decent. Yeah, there was some, I have to admit, Megatron absolutely impressed me. I was not expecting that kind of performance coming into this game, and he absolutely showed that his 10 cap week one was not a fluke. This guy is the real deal. Um, but apart from Megatron, I mean, if you were to pick an MVP from Boostin, I want to hear your opinion on that. 
Uh, MVP on Boosin is definitely going to be intercessed because of all the tag pros he got. I don't know if he's cheating or what, but <laughs> he got so many tag pros that it changed the tide of the game and secured them to win in game two. Yeah, those came in the clutch. Uh, now, in terms of entertainment factor, how entertain on a scale of one to ten, how entertaining was this game two on Rush? Uh, it wasn't entertaining at all. It sucked. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we didn't get what we wanted, so zero out of ten. One good. out of ten. Uh, I guess some good plays. We were leading at some points, right? So I'd give it a five out of ten. Not bad. We not didn't bad. get completely blown out. I don't think. Yeah. In the end, you guys came out with a split. Staying up high there in the standings, three wins out of four. Hard to disagree with that kind of score. And your team has to be confident going into next week that against the best teams, you can get splits. Uh, you guys can basically win against anyone at this point. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, I would talk to Toasty and he's like, don't draft uh, expensive players. I only want a team of like 50 tack coins or less. So we did that and now he's proving that he can carry. So I guess he really wanted this to be like the season that gets him in the ball of fame. And uh, hopefully it works out. <laughs> You're going to make it happen, man. Well, thanks for coming, joining us on Shot Callers. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys as the season progresses. Yeah, thanks for streaming our game, dude. See you in the Super Bowl. Take care. <laughs> Very confident. Awesome. Well, is that, uh, is that it for the interviews? I believe so. Cool. Well, I want to extend a quick thank you to everyone for tuning in to week two here at Shot Callers. Uh, also, a thank you to Pithy for running the stream and Liquid for the co-commentary. We got the Bob 18 helping us out with stream support, running the Jump Cup Halftime Challenge. Thank you for making sure that that uh, ran smoothly, uh, as well as, uh, let's see, what's it called? Firefox Quantum uh, with the Butter Smooth action as well. If you guys like the stream, make sure to follow us on Twitch where you're going to see more entertaining uh, broadcasts here and uh, with Tag Pros only and drinking game. Uh, you can also see replays of the game available at youtube.com slash Ron Sponson. Speaking of that, I am Ron Sponson, and we'll see you guys all next week. <laughs>